so hello and welcome to today's lesson <clears throat> so today's lesson is going to focus on how to diagonalize a matrix so i'm going to kind of off a third year student of mathematics KNUSD, and i'll be taking you through today's lesson so please don't forget to like the video and please subscribe to the youtube channel if you haven't so we are going to illustrate this concept here with this particular example so we are going to diagonalize this matrix and i want to assure you even before we start that this concept is not difficult at all it's very very simple to comprehend so you are going to get it okay and also we are going to explain things into data for you to understand them so this is the right video for you to understand how to diagonalize a matrix so if we are diagonalizing the matrix what we are interested in is a particular um, matrix let's call it d which is a diagonal matrix so this diagonal matrix has a diagonal entries as our Again, values for the original matrix A. So in this case, something like this. So that means when you are diagonalizing a matrix, here you have to find for eigenvalues, values, right? So in diagonalizing this particular matrix here, the first thing we do is to find for the eigenvalues values of A. And we know that in finding for the eigenvalue of a the eigenvalues of a we use this particular formula here that's the determinant of the original matrix a minus lambda times the identity matrix equals zero so when we make substitution this happens to be so there is a one here this happens to be our a matrix and this our lambda, this our identity matrix. So the determinant of it equals zero. Right. So when you simplify what, whatever we have here, that means you are going to subtract lambda from each diagonal element. So that's what we can see here. So the next thing for us to do is to find the determinant of this three by three matrix. So in finding for it, remember that this place is positive. We have negative here and we have positive here. So we have 1 minus lambda times whatever we have here. Then, saying this place is negative, we have negative 3. Then, whatever we have here and here. Then, plus 3, whatever we have here. Alright, so everything equals 0. The next thing we do is to find the determinants of the 2 by 2 matrices. I.e. this, this, and that. Alright, so in finding for the determinants of these 3 by 3 matrices, what we do is that we find the products of these two and subtract them from that of those two. So this time this, minus this time this, this time this, minus this time this. So doing so will give us whatever we have here, this and that. So the next thing we do is to, you know, make simplification. So expanding what we have here gives us this. What we have here gives us this and whatever we have here also gives us this so the next thing is to just make our simplification so making simplification we are going to end up with what we have here All right so i know this is just simple algebra which you can do it yourself so when we have this then we have to simplify this so then we have negative lambda cube here, which is over here. Then minus 4 lambda squared plus lambda squared will give us minus 3 lambda squared. Then 4 lambda will cancel 4 lambda. Then 9 lambda cancels 9 lambda. Negative 18 and 18 goes away. So we get the whole of this plus 4, this 4, equals 0. So this is a cubic polynomial that we have to find the zeros of. So when we get here, we can decide to multiply through by negative 1. So doing so, you have 
lambda q plus 3 lambda squared minus 4 equals 0. And in finding the zeros of this cubic polynomial, we are going to get 1, negative 2, negative 2. So that means our first target value is 1, the second is negative 2, and the third is negative 2. So um, take note that these two here gives us repeated roots. So that means we have repeated eigenvalues. So this is the first step in finding or in diagonalizing a matrix, right? So actually, after getting our diagonal elements, we know that our our eigenvalues, we know our diagonal matrix will be given us um, 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 2, 0, 0, 0, negative 2. And when we get here, we proceed to find for... So there's the answer though, but we don't end here. We proceed to find for the corresponding eigenvectors. So we have lambda 1 to be 1 and lambda 2 and 3 to be negative 2. So that means we have to find the eigenvectors corresponding to these eigenvalues. So let's just take the first eigenvalue, 1. So recall that in finding for the eigenvectors, this is the formula we use. So making substitution is going to give us whatever we have here. So you could see here we are subtracting 1. From each diagonal element because the eigenvalue we are using here is one. Then there is our um, this here is representing the eigenvector we are finding for, and there is our zero vector. So when we do this subtraction here, we are going to end up with what we have here. Alright. So this is of the form E S equals B. Then we like to write this particular thing in the augmented matrix form. So, in writing it, we have whatever we have here. Then, um, the next thing we do is that we have to reduce this to the real echelon form using Gaussian elimination. Alright, but remember for the Gaussian elimination, what we do is that we always make sure the element that we have here is 1 but in this case it is not so so the only way we can do that is to swap root 3 and row 1 so we swap row 1 and row 3 and that gives us this then the next thing is to make sure all the elements beneath are e11 are 0 so this is already 0 but it is not zero, so that means we have to work on that. So to make that zero, we use the formula row two equals the new row two equals the old row two minus row one. So that's going to give us this one minus this, which is zero, two minus one, which is one, and one minus zero, which is one. So this becomes our new augmented matrix. Then when this our a two two is one, that's fantastic. But we have to make sure whatever is beneath that is also zero. So we have to make this zero. And the only way to make that is to use this relation. So root 3 equals root 3 minus root 2. So this is the new and this is the old. So that's going to give us 1 minus 1, 0. 1 minus 1, 0. 0 minus 0, 0. And that gives us this. So this is of the form that we want. So we can write this back to this form. E S equals B. Did we write this form? Then what this implies is that we have K1 plus K2 equals 0 and k2 plus k3 equals 0. So note that um, you see in our third row we have 0, 0, 0. Right? So this implies that the k3 here is a free coordinate. So since it's a free coordinate then we will have to um, represent it by a dummy variable. So we can choose any dummy variable. But in some cases, we do compare it to a natural basis, so we choose it to be either 1 or 0. But in this case, we are going to choose a dummy variable, so we choose k3 to be s, right? So since k3 is s, you know, from this equation, k3 is equal to negative, k2 is equal to negative k3, so that means k2 will be negative s. And from this equation we have here, k1 is equal to negative k2, so making substitution will give us s. Right, so that means we found k1 to be s, k2 is equal to negative s, 
and k3 is equal to s so in writing our eigenvector we're going to get s minus s s and when you um put s out right so you see when we bring s out we'll get one negative one one right so this here becomes the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue one i hope you get it so hence the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue one is what we have here then we have to find for that of lambda equals negative two so when lambda is equals negative two we use the same formula so we have to subtract negative two from each diagonal element of the original matrix a this here is the eigenvector and this our zero vector so after making this subtraction here we end up with whatever is here all right so we can put this this of the form a s equals b we can put this in the augmented matrix form and you know that the augmented matrix is just uh, of the form this form All right so we have it then the next thing we do is that we divide through by three because you can see we have a lot of threes here so we can divide through by three so doing that division gives us whatever we have here then we already have our a11 to be one here so we just have to make sure whatever is beneath that is zero so we have to make this zero and this zero too and there's the formula we use so the new row 2 is equal to old row 2 plus 1 new row 3 is equal to old row 3 minus 1 then doing those computation will give us a new augmented matrix which is of this form and we are done with our Gaussian relation process so writing this back in the form a s equals b we have this as you can see here and it's the same as k1 plus k2 plus k3 equals zero so here you can see the the whole of root 3 is zero the whole of root 2 is zero so this means k2 and k3 are free coordinates So since they are free coordinates, we choose a certain dummy variable for them. So we choose let's choose k3 to be s and k2 to be t. So from this particular equation, we have k1 equals negative k3 minus k2, which gives us this here when you make substitution. So that means our v will be equal to k1. And K1 is minus S minus T. K2 is T. K3 is S, right? But we can decide to, you know, expand this. So when we expand this, we'll get what we have here. So you can see, we will be equal to, when we take the S part, the first part will give us negative 1. Because the coefficient of S here is negative 1. We don't have any X here, so 0. Then 1. Then we get plus T, negative 1, 1, 0. So we have this here. So when you have this here, you can see we have two eigenvectors. So this is our eigenvector 1. This is our eigenvector 2. So the reason I are getting two eigenvectors is you realize that for lambda equals negative 2, we had twice of it. So lambda 2 was negative 2 and lambda 3 was also negative 2. So we had repeated roots. So that's the reason why we are getting two eigenvectors for that right so that means this are uh, eigenvector 2 eigenvector 3 record that we've already found for the first one so we have a certain p matrix such that it is given by the entries of our eigenvectors so this was our eigenvector 1 eigenvector 2 eigenvector 3 so that is our p and the reason why you form our p is that this p helps us to be able to um know the property for the diagonal matrix right so our diagonal matrix as i said is just the a diagonal matrix with the diagonal entries being our eigen values so when you make that substitution this becomes a diagonalized matrix and 
this our diagonal matrix satisfy this condition so the condition is that the original matrix a is equal to the p that we found here times the diagonal matrix d then times p inverse so if after you've done your calculation the p and the d you found for doesn't give you a when you do this multiplication that means there is a certain issue with what you've done so this d here becomes the diagonalized matrix for our a matrix that we had in your original question so note that note one thing that you see we found the eigenvalues values and we had one negative two negative two someone could have decided to name lambda one negative two instead lambda two negative two and lambda three one so in this case the person's diagonalized matrix will be negative two zero 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 negative two zero 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 one and the person's p matrix will also change right so what i want you to know is that the most important thing is for the diagonalized matrix the entries are the eigenvalues it doesn't matter how you're going to do the arrangements okay so if you solve and you get this and you see this this is also correct so thank you very much please don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel please like the video i wish you all the best